<laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning. <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. And welcome to Clayton United Methodist Church. We're trying something new. We're recording the service, and uh, um, it's, so it'll be a little interesting, a little different, and we'll, hopefully we'll have this out on uh, Facebook and YouTube this afternoon. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, our announcements this morning, we are, we have a bucket for our Super Bowl uh, contributions for our, the, um, the recipe booklets for bread and soups. Uh, those are back there and please make sure you take one and if you'd like to leave a donation, we'd love to have that. Um, and if anybody uh, does, comes in afterwards, uh, make sure they get the, uh, the juice and the cup for our, um, for our communion this, after, this morning. So, any other announcements that we need to make? We're, okay. Then let us open with prayer this morning. Well, I think we should um, lift our eyes and look around. God's love shines from the face of each one. Let us rejoice that we're here together with a wave hello. Good morning. Good morning, all. <laughs> so glad to see you all. Yes, would you? I'm sorry? Yes, would you? Yeah, there's the, the bags back there. How many? There we go. Oh, I, yeah, Richard's got two. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Barb. Let us pray. May the Lord bless you. And, whoop, how about this one? How can we keep silent if we truly know the awesome power, mercy, and love of God? Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Amen.
Please turn in your hymnal to page 859. Page 859, yes. Well, it, it has this musical, Praise the Lord Who Reigns Above, right? Yes. Would you like to um, yeah, let I us know what that sounds like? For it is good to sing praises to our God. A song of praise is fitting. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Great is our Lord and abundant in power, whose understanding is beyond measure. Open our hymnals to page 395. Take time to be holy. We'll sing verse 1 and 2. now share our joys and concerns and uh, where have you seen God at work this week? Yes. Well, yes. I would like to thank Jan Janice Raymond. She did all the work and got me signed up and I got my shot. <laughs> Way to go, Janice. Well, you're a sleuth. <laughs> so anybody else needs their shot, uh, see Janice. Uh, she knows who to call. You betcha. Yeah. So we give thanks for uh, getting getting those first shots uh, in arms. Lord, in your mercy. And, and my bird feeder has been really busy the last couple of days. <laughs> it, it's beautiful. Yeah. Lots of fun. It's fun to feed the birds and, and so essential for their survival. So we give thanks for beautiful birds. Lord, in your mercy. I don't know about you all, but it's nice to see this row all filled up. <laughs> and we're just delighted that you're all here tonight and, and over COVID. And that's, uh, thank goodness for that. And yay. <laughs> yeah, Anna's the only one that got it, so luckily. And um, they're all home because, you know, the big joy, we celebrated my dad's 86th birthday yesterday. Oh, wonderful. Oh, good. So he needs a lot of prayers. Um, Every day and night. Um, so. 
Well, we lift up Dale for his liver cancer and for the family for taking good care. Uh, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Any others? Yes. Uh, Emma came home yesterday with some food. They're going to have a baby in August. Oh. Oh. So Elizabeth's also pregnant. She's going to have a baby in August also. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Three weeks apart. Three weeks apart. Well, that's wonderful good news. Both girls, or Austin girls, are getting uh, will be having babies in August. Though this is a great year, Lord, in Your mercy. Well, plus you've had lots of lambs and and goats. I understand. So keeping you up most of the night. <laughs> well, for for lambing season and uh, for this time of year, Lord, in Your mercy. And the others, Barb. Um, in putting together the recipe booklet, uh, I, I did one as a, uh, a sample and stapled it with my little stapler at home and showed it to Blaine and his response was, you can't keep it open. You need one of those long reach staplers. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Never even thought of it. So we got online and did a little research and uh, they're not as expensive as I thought they might be. But this was Thursday and we would not be able to get one until Monday or Tuesday, which was too late. So I'm thinking, okay, who's got one that I could borrow? <laughs> well, as Esther said, it's nice to have friends. I have a friend who works uh, in an office in Hudson. Gave her a call. It's good. Yeah, you bet. Well, we give thanks for the, uh, the loan of the stapler and the, and the booklets, too. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. How's med school going? Good, yeah. Busy. I'm, uh, I'm already I'm a month away from ending my first year. So, kind of, yeah, it's, it's been Where? crazy. Went really, mm -hmm. not really fast. Where did the time go? I know, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, going great. A lot recently, ever since January, we've been like mainly online, but uh, plans to get us back in the clinics in like April around that season. So uh, staying busy, loving a lot of it. Well, we lift you both up as uh, as you still continue your studies. Lord, in your mercy. And the others. And let's lift up to God those things that are deep in our hearts in silent prayer. O Holy One, with our ancestors and all the people of God, we gather to sing your praises. You are the one who has created the cosmos and the ants. You give food to the whales and the sparrows. You name the stars and count the hairs on our heads. Compassionate One, we offer you our thanksgiving for your many blessings. Powerful one, inspire us this day to turn our praise into action, to share your good news with those who long to hear a word of hope, and to proclaim your message of peace and justice throughout the world. You who formed us, named us, and gathered us, open our ears to hear your message. And you who give power to the faint, help us to understand your message. You who uplift and strengthen and heal, inspire us as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we have special music this morning with Esther and Mary, a duet. We do? I didn't know that. I did. <laughs> we don't. I lost track of time. <laughs> We don't have a duet. <laughs> no, we don't have a duet. But okay. We do have a birthday, so maybe we could do that. Oh, let's, that's absolutely correct. Thank you for catching that. Somebody's birthday is uh, next week. Right, Bill? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Bill, happy birthday to you. Thanks, but I couldn't see you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it again. No. <laughs> all right, all right, that's wonderful. Well, then... Um, we want to give thanks for, well, we have some young folks here. I don't know, you're, you're up for coming up this morning? All right, come on up. swells up and the measles, you know, you get this rash all over. You know, those are things that now you get an MMR vaccination and you never have those things again. I guess, you know, this is the world we're in that we're going to get a COVID shot and, and we hopefully won't get the COVID and that's, uh, you know, that's, that's the kind of the world we are in. It's just amazing and we're so, you know, proud of your brother for going into medicine you know, it's not, he's not doing research, he's doing a pediatrics, right? Uh, yeah, that's the primary care at some point, yeah. Primary, primary care physician, mm -hmm. but also a pediatric, I yeah. think it was, was one of the things, if I remember. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Cool, yeah, so it's, you know, what's so important, and we've got, you know, so glad to be able to support you in, in that endeavor and, and to keep that going. Uh, and just, and they were so glad that you're healthy, and, and you know, just all of us have, you know, we're all afraid of that getting sick. And you know, so it's we get to that point where we have to and we get to trust God and know that God is the great healer, don't we? Yeah. Let's give thanks. Oh Lord, we give you thanks this day for for Hannah for recovery, and we give you thanks for the health and the welfare of all of our church members and everyone in our community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we still have candy, so thank goodness for that, right? <laughs> Hopefully you can taste this. <laughs> if not, your dad would be happy to take it for you. <laughs> Well, week after week, we are we give thanks for 
all the contributions that have gone into keeping the, the mission of this church and keeping the doors open, the heat on, um, and knowing that uh, we can continue to minister to all of you in, in this sense because of your dedication. So we lift you up as we let us all stand and sing our doxology now. Praise God from grace and mercy, you are the source of the true healing that can make us whole. We remember this morning that Jesus' ministry was deeply involved in both the healing of people's bodies and the healing of relationships. As we take time now to worship, to offer you gifts, uh, we pray that they might be used to bring healing of body, spirit, and broken relationships to people who are in desperate need. And this we pray in Jesus' holy name. Let us remain standing and sing number 367, He Touched Me. Scripture reading this morning is Mark 1, 29 to 34. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. And that evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he cast out de demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. The word of God for the people of God. Pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So a kindergarten teacher had given her class a show-and-tell assignment of bringing something to represent their religion. 
first child gets up in front of class and said, my name is Benjamin and I'm Jewish and this is the star of David. Second child got up in front of her class and said, my name is Mary, I'm Catholic and this is the crucifix. The third child got up in front of his class and said, my name's Tommy and I'm Methodist and this is a casserole. <laughs> During the season of Epiphany, the church searches for God's revelation in the world of today. Like the wise men of old, we seek signs of God's coming kingdom through Christ the King. Our scripture expresses the truth that there is no better sign of God's working in the world than witnessing God's miraculous healing presence and our grateful response. Every Sunday, we in this church bring our prayers of healing or for healing before the altar of the Lord. And we bring names of loved ones and concerns in our communities and the world. We are sure that God still miraculously heals as God did through Jesus Christ. In our Bible story, Jesus is led to the house of Simon Peter. And Peter's mother-in-law, sick in bed, Peter had witnessed Jesus' miraculous healing of sick bodies and minds, and he hopes for divine healing of his sick mother-in-law. That stone foundation of Peter's home is still preserved as a sacred site. Such miraculous healing is long remembered in our families. Until it's gone, we forget that our health is critical to our well-being. It is more precious than silver or gold, and every time we say hello to a friend or stranger, we offer up a blessing, a prayer of blessing for health and wholeness. The expression, hello, comes from an old Anglo-Saxon word, hail, H-A-L-E, which means health. When we part ways, we say another blessing, goodbye, which is the prayer, God be with you, God go with you. It's an ancient understanding that God is about the business of giving health and wholeness wherever we go. The psalmist proclaimed, the Lord heals the brokenhearted. I cling to this promise in times of illness and brokenheartedness. And given time and openness and prayer, I've often witnessed God's miraculous healing work. I've seen people arise from circumstances that seemed impossible to overcome. I'm often surprised by the vigor and health that is restored it gives me hope in every circumstance. And with the gift of God's unfailing love, our bodies and souls that have experienced intense brokenness can be made whole again. The feeling of brokenness can feel overwhelming, but God's care is unfailing. A broken heart is, needs a healer, and there is no greater healer than Jesus. And throughout the Bible, God is often most clearly made visible in making the sick whole again. It's there, right for, right there, that we bring people and names before the healing work of our Lord Jesus. And he's often referred to as, by believers as the great physician. When we care about ourselves and for ourselves, we naturally care about their health too. The writer Anne Lamont observes, the world is sometimes feels like a waiting room of the emergency ward and that we who are more or less okay for now need to take the tenderest possible care of the more wounded people in the waiting room until the healer comes. You sit with people and you bring them juice and crackers. Our prayers go on and on, Lord, Help those who are sick and brokenhearted. Lord, have mercy on me. And we seek God's healing presence at work in the world today. Indeed, in numerous ways, God heals us. God heals our diseases. God heals us in our worship. God heals us through forgiveness of our sins. 
God evil heals even in death by raising us to everlasting life. Jesus not only restored health, but gave wholeness to both body and soul. So Simon Peter's mother-in-law, sick in bed, Jesus took her hand and raised her up. The Greek word for raised is used again when the Bible writers speak of Jesus being raised from the dead. God's power to raise us is awesome and miraculous. But also awesome and miraculous is Peter mother, Peter's mother-in-law's response to Christ's healing. The scripture says the fever left her and she got up and served them. She became an enduring example of our response to God's healing presence. We who have been healed by God's grace become wounded healers for others. We in the church carry on the work of Christ's healing presence in the world. We become grateful and essential workers in God's coming kingdom. Others should see in us Christ's resurrection power of health and healing. We are essential workers in Christ's healing ministry. Now, there was a story I read in the New York Times some time ago about an employee in a publishing company who was dead at his desk for five days before anyone else in the open plan office noticed. His name's George Tucklebaum, 51. He quietly passed away on Monday, but nobody noticed until Saturday morning when an office cleaner asked why he was working during the weekend. Our goal as Christian workers is to be a little livelier than that because it matters whether we are healthy or not. Grateful participants in God's healing work are essential to the church and to the world. And Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth and the light to the world. And we hold the world steady when others would shake it apart. We pitch in where we are needed and serve where, when we are able. There are no non-essential workers in the church, but we each have been healed by God's redeeming love and we are all ready to serve. This healing ministry continues through the church today. We're grateful for those men and women who can't be kept in their sick beds for long. Early they rise and are ready to serve. We give witness to Christ's healing touch that has raised us up and brought us new life. The Apostle Paul in the right wrote to the Christians in Corinth, blessed be the God and, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who consoles us in all our afflictions so that we may be able to console those who are in any infliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. Indeed, we have been confront, comforted and healed so that we might offer God's healing to others. During this pandemic, we've had a heightened sense of awareness of those who serve to keep our communities going in the midst of challenging circumstances. The healthcare workers, the grocery workers, the milk parlor workers, the delivery people who go to work each day. We see people offering all sorts of services above and beyond the call of duty. And if we look deeply enough within, we can acknowledge that the ways that we too contribute to the health and the well being of others, it doesn't take much to express our gratitude and our service. Even a simple thank you goes a long way. Aristotle wisely observed that dignity does not consist in possessing honors, but in deserving them. Peter's mother-in-law is remembered and honored through her, throughout scripture for her dignity and her grateful response to God's healing presence. 
Serving a meal is often a symbol of God's healing presence in the world, and her mother-in-law gets up to serve a meal to her guests. The Good Samaritan in Jesus' parable endures the rot, ensures that the robbery victim is provided food at the inn for continued healing, and the resurrected Jesus cooks breakfast for his heartbroken disciples on the shores of Galilee. And on the first Sunday of each month, we are served a communion meal. And our congregation provides a meal to a local shelter each month. And today, we join our resources together to provide meals for the hungry in Adrian through the daily bread. We are healed so that we can bring God's healing presence to others. Today, in this service of Holy Communion, we recall that we bring our brokenness and need for healing before the great physician. And we pray to be lifted up in health and in wholeness. We arise to a new life to participate in God's healing ministry. Amen. Please look in your, the insert in your bulletin. And you can get your cup of bread and juice out and ready. And if you take a little, get that first little bit of cellophane off so it's ready for you. Christ be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Holy One. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you who gave your word to the people in the time of Ezra. You continue to speak to us now through the teachings of Jesus and through every breath of our bodies and every beat of our hearts. We thank you for millions of stars, for oceans and rivers and uncountable raindrops, for stark branches scratching out wordless songs on a sullen sky, and for the gifts of the earth and the work of human hands. And so with your creatures on earth and all the heavenly chorus, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and holy is your Son, Jesus Christ, who proclaimed the year of your favor, promising good news to the poor, release for the captives, restoration of sight for those who cannot see, and that all who are oppressed will go free. On the night in which he gave himself up, Jesus took bread, broke it, saying, Take, eat all of you. This is my body broken for you, and for whatever you eat, do it in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for the healing of the world. And whenever you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and cup and make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ and make us all members of the body of Christ nourished for the healing of the world. Amen. This is his body broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of him. This is his cup of shed for all of our sins. Drink this in remembrance. Amen. Amen. 
Now let us stand and sing number 557, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, verses 1 and 3. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.